Gary, fair to say a heartbreaking three-point loss to Williamstown at home in round 14 on Saturday. But nonetheless, plenty of positives to take out of the game. And overall, you must have been very proud of the group to fight back the way that they did against what we know are one of the better sides in the competition right at the moment. Yeah, well, obviously before the game, Sammy, they were sitting on top of the ladder and because of our loss to Sandringham. But... Yeah, defensively, it was just a lot of stoppages. Uh, the conditions obviously deteriorated in relation to uh, a showpiece sort of game or making it a showpiece sort of game. But, you know, both sides really have to be commended on the amount of effort that they put in. And, you know, we persisted and persevered. And I thought we probably did enough in the second half, except uh, on the scoreboard. And defensively, as a whole team, I thought we defended extremely well. They only kicked, uh, what, seven goals for the game. But of course, we could only muster six, and uh, you know half that score was kicked in the last quarter, which again shows our fitness is there. And of course, the players to respond is always important from a coaching point of view. But again, to get three points in front, you then should be able to hold on to that lead, uh, especially when you're kicking with the breeze. And I think it was moments that we let ourselves down. We didn't defend well around stoppages. We got beaten around the stoppages, especially in the first half. You know, Meese, we just couldn't contain him. He was too too cunning, too crafty, too big, too strong for both Carey and Waddell. So they're going to learn a pretty valuable lesson. And uh, their midfield setups were, um, I think, very disciplined. And uh, we unfortunately got beaten in and around the source in a lot of instances. And uh, that then puts pressure really on everybody. And uh, defensively, you've got to defend and score launch from too deep. Uh, we need to make sure that that's across our half-back line. And obviously, ball use are getting those conditions needs to be a bit more productive. And we got outmarked consistently in our forward half, which is disappointing. Uh, very little response from our, uh, I guess, all, all over our forwards. And their defenders seem to read the flight of the ball better. And um, if they intercepted Mark, they then basically turned a uh, inside 50 into a rebound 50. So yeah. there needs a bit of work in that regard. It was a real grind all day and the game never really opened up at all, which probably owed a little bit to some of the windy conditions, as you said. Um, but was there anything else happening from either coaching box to cause that sort of a game or did you believe it was just a case of two pretty good outfits just going at it in a ding-dong battle? Yeah, two pretty similar teams, I think, to be honest, Sam. Uh, look, occasionally they had an extra in and around the stoppage, but I didn't think that was an issue. Neither side really put an extra behind the ball. And uh, it was really just a case of, I believe, who could make the most of when they kick with the breeze. And uh, we only had, I think, what, uh, one goal with the breeze in the second quarter. So we wasted a lot of, I guess, productive win time because we were basically defending so much. And, of course, that uh, happens when you're getting beaten in those 50-50s. And whether it was Mark on, whether it was Wheeler, whether it was Gibbons, whether it was Jolly, uh, they were all pretty creative in and around there. And, uh, of course, you do get a lot of confidence when your Ruckman's winning a fair share of hitouts. And I think we only had 25 uh, actual hitouts that we won. And I think uh, Meese was around about 70-odd. So that's a big difference. And what it does is it gives confidence to his mids, whereas our, unfortunately, mids are on the back foot. So that's an area where we need to address and uh, we're going to have to be certainly better in relation to uh, winning games. If you don't win the midfield, mate, it makes it hard. We were hit with a couple of curveballs in the curveballs in the lead up to the game with a few laid outs, including Robbie Nahas, who was probably missed from a playing and coaching point of view out there on Saturday because it just looked as if there was a little bit of connection missing with the front half of the ground at times and also the second successive week where we've we've kicked a very low score. So I can only assume that yourself and the coaches will be placing some emphasis on trying to tidy up that area of our game against Werribee this week. Yeah, most definitely. And look, OK, young, you know, Daniel Stanford, he had uh, a wonderful opportunity to play his first game. But, you know, when your key forwards aren't marking the ball and winning 1v1s, you're not going to always get the ball lace out. So you've got to scrap and bring it to ground and then try and keep it in. You don't want it to come in and then just waltz straight out again. So when none of our forwards played really well on the day, I didn't think. And uh, OK, with the windy conditions, maybe it wasn't a forwards day because really neither did any of Williamstown's forwards have big days. But defensively, both teams were on top. Uh, we got beaten in the midfield in the first half. Uh, so our... 
ability to actually then play the moments when needed and get the job done, we just couldn't do it. And uh, we still had chances. You know, there were set shots in that last quarter. Um, obviously, yeah, a couple of posters in the third. We dominated up this end of the ground and, you know, set shots. So they're moments that you're presented with in tight games. And there's got to be, I guess, that sort of resolve or that resilience to say, well, I mightn't get too many opportunities or chances, but of course I've just got to nail them when yeah. they're there. And they nailed their chances. There were moments that they nailed and unfortunately we didn't nail them. And this week we're off to Highgate Reserve in Craigieburn for the first of a few road trips coming up for us in the next month or so. The Tigers have been pretty good on the whole of the season, it must be said, so another good challenge for the boys to overcome if they are serious about playing a, a part in the pointy end of the season. We're currently still inside that top four as we speak, so our destiny is still in our own hands. Yeah, and that's the way you want it to be. You know, we're working pretty hard at what we're trying to do. Obviously, the Sandringham loss was disappointing because that's probably a side that, given what we have got available, we should be able to win. Obviously, Willie sitting on top of the ladder. It could be a little bit of a 50-50 game. But, yeah, it's now certainly in our court and uh, we want to make sure that what we didn't do well on Saturday with that connection, as you put it, our uh, forward 1v1 connection, our coordination of the forward half, our stoppages, they certainly need to improve because if you don't get a winning midfield, you're not going to win too many games. Yeah. Well, Gary, thanks as always for your time. Hard luck on Saturday's result, but as I said, a gutsy effort that you should be proud of and here's hoping we can bounce back this weekend. Yeah, thanks, Sam.